Welcome back to Footy Classified. It's been a hot old night tonight, no doubt about that. Ross Lyon is our co-host here on Footy Classified, but is one of the most fascinating personalities in football and certainly has been for the last 15 or so years in his coaching career. Caro, it's uh, an opportunity we get to ask some questions of Ross to actually get some answers, take a breather and ask some hard-hitting questions. Over to you. Does it cut deep to have come close but not be a premiership coach? I know about her. It's... I wear lots of, lots of hats, but on, on the resume, it's certainly something I'd love to have there. And, and at some level, that, that desire is deep inside to try and achieve that. There, there's no doubt about that, but it all depends what the metrics you apply. But uh, it's a bit like the great players, in a sense, even though coaching's significantly different. It's, well, you haven't got a premiership. You know, you, you know it defines Dunstall can separate himself from Gary Lyon and Rewalt and that, you know, so... but. I'm happy to have the discussion, but I'd like to think I've got a bit more depth of character than, than my life's defined by, by not having a cup. Because there's p- plenty of people with premiership medans that have got a huge struggles in life. So, But would I like one? I'd love one. Matthew Lloyd, your question. Yeah, Ross, there was the Matty Scala toe poke in 2009 and the bounce of the ball for Stephen Milne in 2010. Do you think back to one of them more so than the other in terms of the hurt of getting close but not quite close enough? No, they're not... Look, the, the bounce of the ball, Milne, is an interesting one. It would have been great for it to go through. I watched the highlight, um, highlight to the round, and Monfries kicked one from Port Adelaide that went at right angles and bounced through to win a showdown. So you need a little bit of luck. Um, you know, but there was, there was so many moments pre all of that that happened where we could have executed better and, and owned the game in certain situations. They're the things I more think about, but... Um, I always said to my players before grand finals in every game, if you give everything you got and you don't get what you want, well, you lay there exhausted but with no regrets. And no one could sit there and say the 0, 9 and 10 Saints didn't give everything they got and laid there exhausted. And there's no regrets. Just not, not only that, yeah. kept your club alive hmm. and probably is the reason why St Kilda is still in existence today, those years. Plenty of Collingwood grand finals that were heartbreak, but that's what set the tone for our club to go. Lordy, another one? Yeah, but Ross, just on that Geelong game, you know, a lot of people will say that you should have been five goals up at halftime. Do you look back on, on that and say, geez, that's the one we really let slip? Yeah, I suppose winners are grinners, and, mm. but it gets lost in the narrative. It was 37 entries to 15 at halftime. I mean, that's a domination mm. and in the wet. And I heard Jimmy talking the other day about the great weather, weather team. And it's probably a, some things I could have done more. You know, could I have worked harder to break the, the haze tag? Could I u- utilise Luke Ball's time on the ground better? Y- yes, I could. So they're things that I need to own. Could the players have executed in front of goal? Yes, they could. But guess what? It's a decade ago. Um, we've still got great relationships and, um, well, you know, and we try to hardest. Not with Luke Ball you don't, do you? Well, I, I think I do. Oh, OK. Yeah, Luke, Luke come over to my place. I spent Lenny Hayes' 40th with him. Um, we, we've had conversations. Yeah, he's a great person, Luke. Um, was he disappointed and I was disappointed how it ended? Yeah, but in the end, he, he made, and his family, a strong decision that worked out well for Luke. Is he still connected to that group and, and we have a healthy relationship? I would like to think yes. And, and we, it wasn't we've had like that numerous... originally, but maybe it's changed. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe time. Yeah, when the off. battle's over, yeah. we'll get back and together again. I wouldn't have brought it up if if it wasn't yep, something to be enough. discussed. Uh, and I think that's reasonable. OK, well, it's been volatile at times tonight. Uh, what's the best spray that you've actually got involved in? Well, I've given a few. The one that Saints boys like is well, four goals down against Hawthorne in 2008 at half-time at Eddie Hat as it was then. And I walked in, I you know, got the Lenny Hayes, seven tackles, you know, enormous, and um, Clint Jones, four. And then I went through my Tagner, one, with his one paw. Um, got up, probably one. And Rewalt, none. And a bit of an adjective for the year. So, so really, I haven't had a tackle for the year. And everyone sort of jumped back because <laughs> he didn't get that many clips. But they went out, they went mad, they turned it around and we won. But there's a few others along the way. But that, that's one the Saints boys love. Did you have one that you used to go to? Was your go-to man? Mick Mightash used to go at Ben Johnson because he knew he could take it and he'd lift. Yeah, Stephen Milne he was very resilient. He, he could cop a few. But, um, you know, you, you have to pick your mark. It's yeah. not one size fits all, and, that, and that's the art form. And um, and that's what you see, you hear Chris Scott speak tonight. Like, well, he's a wonderful leader. You hear Clarker. They lead their clubs. They guide them through, and, and they're worth their weight in gold in times of crisis. But Ross, uh, you ruled with an iron fist at times. Um, you were demanding as a coach. How did you evolve, and and what inspired you? Who sort of took you on the journey? Well, I think your your own emotional intelligence. Your different eras, different. Um, players, young players coming through and 
the Saints were, were ready to be driven. They, I spoke to Rewild that he goes, we love to be driven. That whole group loved the drive. And I think Grant Thomas really conditioned them. He was quite hard on them, Grant, you know, going back to the flight of the ball. and mm. there was, there was, So I drove, but it was really about standards. But all of them got carved out individually. I hardly ever said no to any request because if a player comes to you and they want to do something with their, their family or their girlfriend or their wife, they want to do it. So I always say yes, but understand that there's a give back at the right time. I never said no. Never said no, but set standards. And then, and Freeman and I went over, like I felt enormous pressure. I felt they're a club with not much respect, no relevance on the East Coast, to be honest, but one finals appearance. And I never knew what I was walking into. And I was like, right, went in and there was some standards need to be set here. Even little things, symbolic things, like there was a coach's car park and a captain's car park. And I was like, mate, I'll get whatever car park I like because I'll be here early. So we got rid of them. And I thought that was symbolic. It's about equality and we're all equal and we all go. So as I mellowed out, as you get older and, and you have your own kids and you get a bit wiser, you, you tend to pick your battles. Alan Jeans, honey honey and vinegar. You use more honey than you do vinegar. And, and embracing Brayshaw and Chera and those guys, I went out of my way because they were so young. And support and challenge is my model. There's some groups that can be challenged more and then there's others that are struggling, struggling... It was just the last few years, three years at the Dockers, really. It was just support nearly 99% of the time. Ross, your relationship with Mick Malthouse soured when he abused Stephen Milne earlier in the year. Fast forward to the 2010 grand final, the draw. There was, it, it was said to me that you were not happy at half-time and you were not happy after the game. Um, you and Mick didn't want to be near each other. <laughs> I think Collingwood, even though they finished lower on the ladder, did the first press conference. What's your memory of that? And am I right, the relationship There's been a bit great. of noise over the years, mate, about that with Mick. Um, I've never had words with Mick, and we've seen each other in the street. And there's a mutual respect and we talk. Grand final days are fierce days. And when you're... That, that, we were beating them convincingly 07... Not 07, 08 and 09. We, we were dominating Collingwood, really. And then that round three game, they come out with everything. They attack Clint Jones before the game, which I respect as a tagger. Get him off Didac, I think it was. Um, they threw everything at us. We come in at quarter time and we were up. Milne was walking past and it was a personal... I didn't get involved in it because players are big enough and ugly enough to look after themselves. Rewalt tears his hammy in half. He's out mm. for 16 weeks. We have to fight like cage lions to, to get into a grand final. So well, it was pretty fierce. It, it was on. And then grand final... Day walking out at half time, the rooms were flooding. I remember walking past basins and water was sprouting out. It, it caught my attention. And then I went out, the draw happened, you're flat as a tack, you're trying to lead, gather, couldn't go into the rooms. And then I was like, we we're on top of the ladder, you can have the second press conference. I wanted to get to my players. I think we got shunted over the far side. So there was a little bit about, you know, us against the world at that time. So that's, that's what that was. But he's certainly a great coach and there's nothing personal. We should actually sit down and have a chat about that hour after the grand final of, nine, of uh, 2010. It was just extraordinary. Mm. Never happened, as you said. The, the rooms well, what flooded. irks me, I, oh. I, read the, I read that 1977 book of North Melbourne as a young... I yeah. would have been 11. I remember reading it. I knew it inside the out. Coach and then, by John Powers, yeah. You know, I still... I was thinking about it tonight when I knew we were going to be talking. I was like, that was a missed opportunity. Because yeah. we said, do we go to the function or not? And we're thinking recover, get them. But it was all right, bring them together because their minds would have been racing. And yeah. that's something I think, you know, you supported your senior coach. So as leaders of St Kilda, which I was one, we could have done a bit better there. Good on you, mate. We'll talk about that another time. But uh, thank you for being so candid with us. Great questions, Caro.